we're going to be talking about API monitoring for connected customer experiences. So I'll be the co-host today, Prithpal Bogel. I'm part of the Apigee product team. It's nothing but a pleasure to have you folks attend this session this morning. Been with the Apigee team for a little over five years and a drive a few different uh, areas for the product team, including APM monitoring. And I'm super excited to have Luke join us here from Urban Science, and he's my partner in crime t for today's session. And uh, he will also walk us through the Urban Science story and how they're leveraging benefits from the APM monitoring capability that we're just about to talk about. OK, excellent. With that, some basic housekeeping. So this year at Next, we have uh, the ability for uh, the attendees to be able to ask questions on the Dory Q&A link. You should be able to find that in your Google Next app. So please feel free to ask any questions out there. We also have two microphones up here as well. And we'll save some time towards the end for some Q&A uh, live and, and both Dory as well. OK, so just a brief recap of the agenda. We'll talk a little bit about why API monitoring has become so critical. Uh, we'll talk about some of the common solutions which are available in the market today and how the integrated API monitoring is different. And then we'll actually hear live from Luke about urban science history and how they've kind of achieved the benefits from that solution. OK, so if I was to do a quick poll out here, how many out here in the audience think they've used at least one API today on the way to this conference? It's got to be everyone. Uber ordered something. OK. So APIs are becoming mainstream, right? To me, there is no power, there's no more powerful fact than saying it's entered our each and everyday life. On a daily basis, you're probably hitting more than five to 10 APIs at a minimum. In this world, when people are talking about digital transformation, enterprises are morphing them themselves into entities where their products are nothing but APIs. So if you transact your capabilities as APIs with your employees, with your partners, APIs become extremely critical in how you are perceived in the marketplace. For us personally, we pride in powering successful API programs for many of our key customers. And I'm really happy to talk about that. We have nearly doubled our API traffic since, since March of last year. This is the amount of API traffic that we serve just alone from our cloud platform. So let's talk a little bit about because APIs have become so front and center of an enterprise's face out there in this world, what that means is, operationally, the teams have to be on top of ensuring that APIs are performing the way they should. So no longer is it OK for you to find out after the fact that, hey, my APIs, was, APIs were down because it has downstream impact of affecting many of your partners who may be banking on your APIs to deliver connected experiences of their own. So ops teams need to be able to monitor APIs in real time. And more importantly, have the ability to identify issues before the consumers of the API realize that there are some issues out there. That's a very important aspect. And as you start to look through some of these uh, features, you also want to be able to quickly diagnose where the issues are so that you can lower the mean time to resolution. Now, we do have many customers, and when I talk to them, they use several tools out there today to be able to get a sense of, is something broken? And what we find out in, 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 in talking to them, that synthetic monitoring tools just aren't enough. And what I mean by that is, these are typical API monitoring tools which are sitting outside the platform using some probes to be able to gather some key metrics, such as suddenly there's a high amount of error rate in an API, or your latency just went up. So they can tell you what's broken. Of course, they, they serve a purpose. But the key point is they are not correlated with some of the other things that you need to be able to perform useful forensics, such as 
can I go take a look at the log file right now at this moment to understand, you know, can I correlate that with a specific error? So these tools tell you what's broken, but they don't really give you the insights into where it's broken so you can quickly fix what you need to. So Apigee's API monitoring is an integrated API monitoring solution, what we also call as a white box API monitoring solution. And so one of the key advantages of it being integrated into the platform is the ability for it to be able to give you contextual insights into your API issues. So let's say as an example, if we have an error, a higher error rate in an API suddenly, you're able to, through a dashboard, visualize what the error is, and then do contextual drill downs to find out the source of the error, and also do some determinism on how widespread the error is. And actually, I will be showing that to you in a quick demo. But the fact of having API monitoring integrated into the platform not only gives us the contextual insights that we can deliver to you, our customers, but more importantly, it opens up some very interesting possibilities which are just not possible through a synthetic monitoring solution, such as imagine a scenario where you are the operational team and you have, you're using the API Edge platform, as an example, to survey APIs to your consumers. And let's say, for those of out here, just a quick show of hands, how many uh, users in the audience have used Apigee Edge before? OK, quite a few. So Apigee Edge is a full lifecycle API management platform. And you can use out-of-the-box policies to do things like traffic management. Let's, let's imagine a scenario when, if, when you've used one of the spike arrest policies to limit the amount of traffic to one or more APIs. And you have set it to a threshold, let's say, 1,000 per minute. And maybe that serves you know, okay for your needs. And suddenly, there's a catastrophic failure in your backends, the backends which are backing those API proxies. And you want to be able to very quickly shut off traffic to them. Well, one choice is you can go and update all the spike crash policies one by one, depending on the number of API proxies. But by that time, your backends may not be able to survive. So how about if you're able to leverage the power of the platform, and this is something we are working on, and we give you operator controls to be able to dial down the traffic to all the APIs at once. That is what we mean by the closed loop aspect of the integrated API monitoring. That is very powerful. And that is something which a synthetic monitoring tool can never provide to you. So Apigee API monitoring, as I mentioned, is integrated into the platform, leverages the best of Google tech. We have some icons out here, just a quick sampling of the underlying tech that we use to power these capabilities and deliver it to our customers. Precision diagnostics. I'll just spend a very few seconds on this. This is a very important piece of lowering your mean time to diagnostics. And this ties into what I just mentioned. Of course, tools can tell you what's broken, but we tell you where it's broken. I'll show that to you in a few minutes. Contextual insights. This is essentially where once an issue or an error is detected, how do you really take that, drill down through different aspects, and get the right level of insight, which becomes very important for you to resolve that issue once and forever. With that, let me just quickly get into a demo, if we can switch. Awesome. So this is uh, my beautiful Gmail background. Uh, so you can see, imagine in this case that I am the ops person on a schedule, and I've just kind of recently received an alert. So from my perspective, I want to be able to go in, and I can see that there's an alert which was fired for high latency. And this alert tells me what's going on. You can see the organization within Apigee that's encountering the error. It tells me that it sustained you know, latency above what our threshold is. And so I would like to go and take a look at that. Once I click on View Details, and I'm hoping the demo guards are with this today. Looks like they are. OK. So this is the very first entry point. I got an alert. And I came in, and right away I can see that there are some issues with latency. So 
This alert kind of gives me some insight into what's going on. But more importantly, as I start to scroll down, these panels start to give you some more deeper insight. So in this case, as an example, I can see that this particular proxy, the one which I got alerted for, has some high number of errors. And I can click on one of the cells out here to go and figure out what's going on. So in this case, it starts to give me some insights into the total latency and where the error could be. Now, this alert is extremely powerful for me to take a peek on what's going on. But I would like to go and investigate this thing a little bit more. So if I click on the Investigate tab, this starts to give me what I mean by the broad spectrum uh, aspects of the platform. So in this case, I can see that there are different kinds of uh, dimensions that I can compare against. We provide three different panels here. So I can compare fault code, which could be something coming right out of an API proxy. Maybe you've written up a new policy, and that threw an error. I see a very high number of invalid access token errors out here. So as the operator, I'm really curious. I want to be able to click on this time zone and then drill down. What it tells me is that there's a specific API proxy, in this case, the one that I got alerted on, that is having this error. But also out here, if you have developer applications which are consuming it, you will start to get a distribution by not only the developer app, but also by the target backend that you're hitting. This is very powerful, because not only can I do this kind of analysis, but more importantly, I can go out here and also examine the logs. And this is what I meant by contextual insights and drill down. Typically, we see customers doing this thing from a combination of two or three different tools. You may get alerted of an issue. You may then go and determine that I need to go find out and correlate the logs. Well, in this case, you have all that information at your fingertips. So in this case, I now start getting some pretty detailed uh, information about where the error is coming from, which API proxy, you know, and I also more importantly have a message ID that can be used to correlate across other systems, right? So this is just a very simple example of how you can use these capabilities. Additionally, we have also integrated custom reporting into, uh, into this tool. And so we talk to customers, they examine this very classical real-time to trending continuum. And what that means is, of course, they want to be alerted in real time. But they also want to be able to then navigate to perhaps a time frame when the error actually started occurring. And this is a very common scenario in use cases where, let's say you deploy an API proxy. Okay? And let's say your latency threshold happens to be 10 seconds. right? But this API proxy deployed starts to creep up over 5 seconds, 6 seconds, slowly over a period of time. You just happen to notice it the second week that it crept over 10 seconds, you got alerted. But this continuum of real time to trending now gives you the ability to be able to navigate that and see when the error actually occurred. You just got alerted of this thing right now, but that gives you deeper insights into when that happened. So I'll just cover up a couple of screens real quick out here. This is the, the dashboard view where you can get some high level access into the total traffic, the APIs which have the top number of errors, top latencies. And then you can look into different aspects out here. Collections are a way of grouping certain APIs together. What we have found is we have several of our customers who have operational teams who own those APIs. There may be a central operations team who want to be the dispatcher, if you would, but then they monitor groups of APIs with certain characteristics. You can do that easily with collections. Another view I would like to talk about uh, is the recent view. In this case, this is, very, uh, this is a very interesting view where you can do what we call a knock-like analysis, right? like a network operation center. So in this case, this heat map view gives you a peek into what's going on, what's wrong. And if I click on this environment as an example, double click on this, it now starts to give me a drill down of different API proxies. So I can come from the top and see something is an error but then very quickly start to drill on certain scenarios, on certain API proxies, and then being able to kind of examine all the contextual information. Okay, so think of this as the something is wrong at a high level, I can drill, 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 and go to the parts and figure out what's broken. 
The last part I want to show out here is the alerting capability. The, the fact that I got an alert from something out here is something that you can easily configure. So here's an example of the alert that we have configured that fired. In this case, again, we have some pretty interesting heuristics. You can go and do alerting on different metrics, in this case, latency, but you can pick status codes, fault codes, which may be emanating from certain proxies. And more importantly, you can see this pretty interesting chart that we put out here is called the, the condition data. So this gives you, as the operator, the ability to set the alert at the right level so that it's not too noisy. So we aggregate information, give you what the, what the uh, latency is, and you can see the, the chart and determine, well, I really want to get notified at this point in time. Okay. So with this, I'm going to, uh, if we can switch back to the uh, presentation, please. Awesome. So with that, I would like to invite uh, Luke up to the stage here. And uh, Luke, please share your story. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pristal, for the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm going to take you guys through a little bit about our experience at Urban Science and how we uh, got to where we're at today, which is a, a really good spot. We have over 650 APIs in production running right now. Um, we're producing anywhere from 8 to 10 million transactions a month and, and growing on a regular basis. A little bit about me. Um, I've been with Urban Science for about 10 years now, um, working inside the customer space. So all of our stuff is PII related, really sensitive data that we have to deal with. Um, who we are at Urban Science, we're, we, we like data. We're all about data. We're all about big data. And we use that data to solve our, our clients' mission critical problems. Our clients, we're in the Motor City. They're pretty much all automotive right now. We're moving into retail and health as we speak. Um, what we do is we, we listen to our partners and they tell us what they, they need. We help them solve their mission critical problems and we do that with the data and, and with the APIs that we have. Um, we're everywhere. Um, if you've bought a car, looked at a car, thought about buying a car, rode in a car, you've probably touched our software and we've probably touched your records at some point or another. A little map about where we are. So what do we do? So what we do at Urban Science is we listen to our customers. We solve our customers' problems and we do it with data. And we do it loyalty and we, we do it repeatedly and we do it right every single time. And we do it to drive their profit. And we have a really unique vantage point um, at Urban Science because we can, we, we can see the whole ecosystem. We see the whole industry and, and we see it really broadly and really deep across the whole thing. We can optimize dealer networks and we use that optimizations to drive their marketing efforts, their positioning of their, of their locations. Um, again, pretty much anything in the automotive space, if, if you've bought a car or looked at a car, you, you've, you've probably you've touched our software. So what do we do? Um, I run the C4 Marketing Intelligence Cloud. Uh, that is a customer-centric uh, marketing intelligence cloud to drive marketing into the automotive space, and we do it all with data. Uh, Prith Paul indicated earlier that a lot of customers and a lot of businesses are going to API products. That's exactly what our marketing intelligence cloud is. It is just an API product. We have no real front end. Um, we have a bunch of APIs, over 650 of them right now, um, and we've integrated heavily with Google uh, in the Apogee product to help us do that. Um, what we've done is we've taken their products, we've created the dev portal. I'm going to take you through the dev portal, show you how we've kind of structured that a little bit, and then take you into our API management platform and show you where my ops teams live their lives every single day. Um, I'm going to take you into our real life system so you can see exactly what, what's going on. Um, so we do all of everything we do, and we do it to empower our marketing uh, to drive business inside uh, the automotive space and to increase our shopper experience. Um, that happens, again, in real time. And, and so we have millions of transactions flowing through this API management platform um, that's transacting with PII data in some cases um, and a lot of really highly sensitive data. So security was really important for us, um, which is one of the primary reasons that we chose Apigee and API management. We, we didn't want to write that security later. We, we needed authentication, authorization, access, and auditing. Um, and we, we needed that because of the customer-centric approach that we were taking. So our API program, um, it, it basically, we had to figure out why we want to do API. So about 2016, we started down the, the track of um, digital transformation, right? You guys have heard it all, all day, every day for the last couple of days. We needed to build a platform that would be used industry-wide, but we didn't want to build the solutions, right? We wanted to build a platform that would empower other companies, other internal teams to build those solutions. We had access to the data. All that data, the breadth and the width of data um, was very uh, uh, valuable but inaccessible. So we needed to open it up. We needed to open it up and make it accessible. We needed to expose that data 
both internally to other development teams at Urban Science, as well as external partners, um, marketing agencies. If you guys uh, uh, were at some of the other uh, sessions with Viant, we, we've done a lot of stuff to empower marketing agencies with some of this data as well. Um, but not only do we need to make it exposed, we need to make it easy. You know, terabytes and terabytes of data moving around. Um, automotive's a, a pretty legacy industry. Boy, they love their flat files. Um, so, but that didn't work. You can't move the data fast enough at a high enough velocity without exposing some sort of API interface. Um, our customers, they were all, like I said, internal and external, um, both data providers and data consumers. And so we, not only did our API platform have to expose data, right, but it also had to ingest and ingress additional data from other providers, other teams within urban science, and other teams externally. So we needed APIs on the front end to collect that data, and then APIs on the back end to also egress it back out. So why did we choose Apigee? Back in 16, uh, it was before they were bought by Google, actually. Um, I think we, bought, we, we partnered with Apigee, and then like a, two weeks later, uh, we learned that Google acquired them. So I'm like, I heard that, and I'm like, good decision. Um, but we needed, and we, we needed and we required proper, mature API management. Not, um, I, I, I think I understand APIs, but real API management. Somebody who understood the needs of the security, the needs of... Of, of the auditing and the analytics. Um, we needed something that was easy, easy to build, easy to maintain, and easy for developers to get access to. Um, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We didn't want to build all of that infrastructure. We wanted to focus on building our microservices, our APIs, and get them out to market. Um, and again, we didn't want to create that security layer. I, I know, it sounds like a broken record, but <laughs> that security layer is super, super important with the sensitivity of the data. So the C4 Marketing Intelligence Cloud uh, that is our API product today, um, fully integrated with Apigee. Uh, we have, like I said, we have over 650 uh, APIs published, doing anywhere from 8 to 11.5 million a month. It ebbs and flows. Um, if you run an API program or, um, or monitor or watch one, you, you know, you hit those milestones, right? In 2016, we had our first 1,000 transaction day. It was like, woo, 1,000 transactions. And a few weeks later, it was like 100,000. And then it was like 500,000. And then it was like a million. It was like 5 million. I'm like, oh, man, 5 million. We're going to need some more infrastructure. Um, so I'm really happy to hear what they announced earlier today. It's going to be great. It's going to make my life way easier. Um, so what are some of our benefits and, and why it matters? You know, Bird Box, if you all see, is a great movie, right? Fantastic. But being blind is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And, and without proper API management, we were completely blind to what was going on in the system. We couldn't see what our customers were seeing. We couldn't see what our developers were experiencing. So we were completely blind. We needed that real-time visibility into our production API behaviors so that we could respond proactively as opposed to waiting for the telephone call from an angry development team saying, hey, guys, your stuff's broken. Um, those calls are terrible if you're an ops team. Um, we needed API management to allow our teams to view that real-time usage so that we can make critical proactive decisions about scale. Um, when you're at 1,000 transactions a, a day, um, that's a lot different than 1,000 transactions a second. <laughs> Right? And the underlying infrastructure that, that require, that's required to run that, it, it matters. Um, so some of the challenges that we experienced before uh, we put that monitoring in place and before Apigee introduced API monitoring, again, we were blind. Um, the clients would let us know. I think um, the, 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 the worst day was when I had three or four development teams, two internal and one external, send us emails telling us that the APIs were 500. Like, okay, guys, we can't do this. Like, that's, that's terrible. We need to know exactly what's going on inside our systems. Um, and then we were, we were also guessing. So we guessed a lot about what the traffic patterns were going to look like, what the scale was going to look like. You know, we, we had tools that helped us understand that, but we didn't see it in real time. And API monitoring, um, when they, they released it out and my ops team kind of stumbled upon it inside the, the management suite, we were like, oh, man, goodness, that is fantastic. Let's get in on some of that. And it became the space where my team lived. And so that's what I'm going to take you through right now. Um, if we switch over to the demo, uh, we will take you through kind of our journey and how we got uh, to where we're at. So first and foremost, with, a, with the API uh, management tool that, that Apigee provides, um, they give you a development portal, which is great. I didn't have to create a website. My team didn't have to create a website. We configured a website. We productized the APIs in Apigee Management Studio, and then we exposed them to developers. It was fantastic. And so what we got here is basic API uh, portal, and I'm going to jump right into our API docs. And when we jump into our API docs, Let's see if I can click this guy. There we go. So here we have a, a set of 
productized APIs that are publicly available for anyone to request access to. Our, our model doesn't require, um, doesn't allow for just ad hoc consumer integration. So you have to become a partner with Urban Science. We'll then issue you a key. But anybody can go out and look at these. Um, if you actually want to get into the real data, you're going to have to you know, send an email, make a call. We'll issue you a key. Um, it's all super secure. But these are our basic attribution products that we have. Um, again, these are a small subset of publicly available APIs. We have a large set of privately available APIs and a large set of partner available APIs that, that we've exposed. Again, all of this information on the dev portal actually driven through the API management studio based on the productization of the work that, that the, the uh, ops team has done. So we have all these APIs that are out here um, that are available for someone to integrate with and learn more. And you can dr drill down into the Swagger docs and, and learn all the contracts and all that stuff. But what I'm going to take you through next is our API monitoring. I'm going to jump right into the API monitoring dashboard for our marketing intelligence cloud. Um, you can see we've got a couple different proxies that are running right now. But this is where my ops teams live. So we've got all of those um, APIs that are out there that are, are public and productized. Uh, what we've done is we've created a set of collections um, that speak to those attribution APIs. So these are we've created an attribution apps. And what we've done is it, not everything is as important as everything, right? So some of our, our API products are far more important than others. We have over 650 of which some of them are very low consumer, some of them are administration, some of them are customer oriented. So we've got really a, a couple really big key um, API products that, that are important to us and to our customers. And so we've collectionized those. We've created collections out of them and we've made them um, a, a little bit more watchful, if you will. And so once we've got our collection set up, um, then we've gone in and we've made uh, a series of alerts. And you can see our alerts here. Uh, we've got quite a bit of them. Um, we have a little saying in urban science that we like. It's uh, basically five over five. So if you've got five five x errors over five minutes and it repeats, you're going to have a problem. Um, five five x errors over five minutes that doesn't repeat. Latency issue, connectivity issue. Somebody's having uh, you know a couple of hiccups or whatever. Most of those they end up triaging and they end up self-resolving and, and we don't really worry about them. But if if we get five over five repeatedly then we have a problem. We need to go into what Prithvala told you earlier, more that deep analysis about root cause, about why, why the error occurred and, and what's actually going on. And so we've got you know, the, that collection of APIs uh, that we created, and then we've uh, turned those into uh, an alert for the attribution 5x errors. And then that allows us to then subscribe to those alerts. And my team, like I said, they, they live inside this API monitoring space. Um, we, just like Prithpal told you, we have the, the alerts that come to the email for proactive responses. Um, we have a lot of different things that this tooling has empowered our team to be really visible and see what's going on um, and, and, and helped us evolve from, um, hey, we should do APIs to 100 transactional APIs to over a million, over 10 million a month um, with the same exact ops team. So we, we've continued to scale the infrastructure. We've continued to scale the system. And with this tooling in place, we've been able to maintain that small operational team while also maintaining a high customer satisfaction at well. Um, that pretty much wraps up all of my demo. Um, I think we've got uh, about 20 minutes or so for questions. Uh, Perth Paul, I'd like to invite you to come back up and, and we can take it from there. Sure. Thank you so much, Luke. That, that was a great demo. Uh, so thanks for taking us through that. And I think... Uh, you had a couple other uh, dashboards out here. But I think uh, one of the, I'm, I'm just going to start summarizing it here in a few. But I just want to go back to the demo that you just did. I think that was a great uh, example of how, in real life, you know, urban science is using API monitoring to stay ahead of what their customers are experiencing. And that was a very powerful statement. He, he said that we want to be able to experience and see what our customers are experiencing. That's another example of how API monitoring gives you the tools to be able to be proactive, determine what's going on, and quickly mitigate some of those issues. Some of the alerting that Lucas took us through graciously was also uh, a mechanism to kind of get alerted on the channel of your choice. So as an example, you know, we saw emails which were, you know, that I got, but again, you can use different notification channels such as PagerDuty, Slack, or pretty much anything out there which has a webhook. The picture that you see out here, again, is uh, an extract from their dashboard out here, which gives you the drill-down capability that we were talking about. 